Hi guys, and welcome to my third grade classroom. I'm going to give you a tour of my class. Many of you were asking if you can see my classroom setup so that you can get some tips as to how to set up your classroom. I hope it's helpful. Let's get started. And before we get started, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. We wanna to continue to bring you wonderful videos. So if you could help us out and go ahead and click that like button. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this classroom tour. First things first, this is our affirmation station, and we do this in the morning after morning meetings. This is a great place to give students that reminder, that morning reminder of who they are. And also, it's great for if a student is having a difficult time and you're trying to build relationships with them, just taking them to this mirror just to remind them of their identity is so very important. Okay, so we have our affirmation station. Here we have our calendar and our days of the week. We also have our seasons. This is at the front of my class. And I also have my number chart, which is so very helpful. Because we're in third grade, we're going from one to 1,000. And of course, it's broken up into increments of 100 until they get to 1,000. Skip counting is a big thing in building that number sense, so I wanted to add this to the front section as well. So it's September. I also have my little welcome to school sign. I also have my place value flip chart. This is very good for building that number sense as well. We go up to the thousand, so this is wonderful. I just added this this year. Here is my exit ticket bucket. When students are finished with their exit tickets so they have responses, they'll just add them here. We have our sanitizer, Kleenex is right here. And this is basically just a station that we use for our supplies. Um, as you can see, many of the students do not have headphones, so this is the headphone bin. I also have one right here. Here I have headphones in this bin, headphones in this bin as well. Here we just have Jingle Blocks and Play-Doh for indoor recess. Here is for our behavior charts. I went ahead and copied these just for the year so I don't forget and then I'm stuck that morning without them. So I went ahead and copied all of those. And this is a great way for parents to be able to keep track of how their children are doing daily. So they'll just color in their calendar and their parent will be able to see the code and know how their behavior was. And they do this every day. Wonderful for behavioral management. Here we have packets for our thousand charts in the increments of 100, like what I showed you on display. Extra water bottles, just in case kids need it. Cups for students. We have multiplication flashcards coloring pencils and extra pencils, extra tablets, um, extra paper. Here is just some of my stuff. Disregard that, it's kind of a mess. Here we have rulers. And then here is where I just add my items to my calendar. So this will be the months. And then we open up this little container. And then this will just house everything that's going to go on my actual calendar. So this is just, so this is just my calendar then. Here is where I house like my extra papers for the day and for the week. And then I'll just put my copies in here so that I'm prepared and ready to go. This is my smart board. If you notice, I have a lot of tabs up. I usually go ahead and set my tabs the day before so that I'm prepared and ready for the day. Up here, we have a cute little banner that says the future of our world is in our classroom because it definitely is. It's in our room today, all right? And then across here, I have my cursive writing banner. And I found this cute little banner in Dollar Tree. I showed you this in our last video. So if you did not see that, go back and check it out. And then just to our right, we have our behavior management chart where we're showing the students the expectations. They know their voice levels. We have hand signals that they can use in our classroom. We have our schedule. So here's our behavior management chart. All students start on green. And as they progress and they're giving wonderful answers, they're behaving and they're on task, I'll clip them up. And then as they clip up, they'll earn extra coins for the day. Once they get to 10 coins, then they're able to pull from our treasure chest. And I'll show you the treasure chest in just a bit. Now, once they're bumped down, first we gotta think about it, that's your warning. After a child has to think about it, then they'll go down to teacher choice. It might be silent lunch, restricted recess, it might be timeout in our classroom or in another classroom. And then if I have to keep talking to you, then after that, then you go to a parent contact where I call parents or I send a note home. 
And this behavior chart actually works hand in hand with the behavioral calendar that I just showed you all earlier. So depending on what color they have here, they'll color their calendar so that their parent knows how they did for the day, okay? Here we have our mailboxes for student work. And then as we move over here, I have photos of my family just so they'll know my background and what my family's like. So they'll know that Miss Dove has a life outside of school. And then we have our happy birthdays. And I just decided to use dots this year. So just in case a student has some work or something that I wanna put on display, I can also use it for that as well. Here, I just have some containers that can be used in this group. This is our small group area. Noelle's taking a bit of a nap, but this is our small group area. So if I have somebody that comes in to do interventions with my students, they'll be right here. So I already have like a bin with blocks and things that they might need for that group. They also will have a dry erase board here that they can utilize. Here, I have all of my teacher books, my module books, trade books, and then I have my book that I just released August 19th. If you have not gotten your book, please go get it. Have another picture frame with my family. Here I have some equity sticks with the students' names on them. So um, I'm not always calling on the same person. I'll just pull their stick and call that student's name. Fan in the class because it is hot in here. Here is our math manipulative station. Specifically, we have our stem blocks here have a variety of stem blocks, Unifix cubes, we got some Legos. We have these building blocks here, some here. Oh, we got some geo sticks, all sorts of things that they can use for building. Here are counters, just in case they need it for math. We have magnetic tiles here. And then just math manipulatives that are needed for our class. And paired with our STEM bin, we have STEM bin responses. They also have task cards of different things that they can build in this STEM bin. And then after building their structure, then they'll write their response. In this section, we have our helping hands and then how students get home. This is a quick way for me to know who's going where. Helping hands helps to build leadership in our classroom, and it also gives students extra tasks and responsibilities to help out in our classroom. Here we have our must-dos and our may-dos, so the students will know what is required. And then if you finish an assignment, these are some things that you can do. For my board, I've partitioned it into five quadrants. The smaller quadrants are for each subject area. And then within this outer subject areas, you'll see that we have our learning targets. And then for math, because we have math homework, I put the pages for the homework as well as our classwork pages. So I'm not having to find them. I'll do that the day prior. And then we'll have our learning targets for reading. So these are our I can statements. So these are our multiplication numbers. And these are great for giving kids quick access to the multiples at which they would land on as they're skip counting by our number. These are great for building multiplication facts. So I always display these in my class and the kids use it so much throughout the year as a reference so they can build that multiplication fluency. Here we have our banner that says, I have a growth mindset. And then below, we tell them what a growth mindset looks like. I know everything is difficult before it is easy. I know my mistakes are a learning experience. I know there lies a great power in using the word yet. I'm not there yet, but I will get there. I know I can train my brain to accomplish great things and I will not give up until I make myself proud of what I've done. Here we have our math word wall. So we're, as you can see, focusing on multiplication thus far. And then I have my clock. I've added this scaffold here where the petals are the skip counts by five around the clock. So this is our reading word wall and you'll notice that some of the letters have been linked together just for sake of space. And also I link them together based on how you say them in the alphabet. And I also, if you notice with the vowels, they are, they have like an extra piece of paper behind them just to emphasize that these are our vowels. And what I'm doing with this word wall is collecting sight words as well as words that my students have a difficult time spelling. This gives me a running record as well as the class, a running record of all the words that we spell this year. This is for extra space or specifically reading words like inference or main idea. So our subject area specific words, I'll put them here. Here we have books that speak to 
African-American culture. The majority of the students, if not all of the students in my class are African-American. So I wanna make sure that they're able to see themselves in the books. Again, my book is on display before you know it. Have the match go yet, waiting for Biblio Burrow. So we are showcasing diversity in our books and I also want my students to see themselves in the books that they're reading. Here we just have our books in different cubbies. The books that are in the white cubbies are those that closely align with our actual module lessons. And then these in the smaller cubbies here, these are chapter books. These are all the books from black authors in this section. These are like all my non-fictional books or science books. And yeah, just a variety of books. Some of them I just put in based on the size of the book. My rug, Maddie and Ava are laying on top of, but let me just show you my rug. Around the perimeter of the rug, you'll see the alphabet is featured. And then on the inside of the rug, we have the United States of America. So that it also serves that dual purpose of giving students a reference for the states of our country. This area is just for extra stuff, puzzles here, whiteboards, extra paper if students need it. Here is where I pull my word wall words and like reading responses. If students need a clipboard, they're here. Here's our Chromebook card. I have another fan because again, it is hot. So you'll see for my students' desk, all of them have sacks for their chairs. And I wanted students to be able to quickly access the important items that they would need for class. So in their sacks, they have a whiteboard, and they have, they should have a dry erase marker and they'll also house their purple folder that will go home and then be returned to school. Name tags have an extra scaffold where they have the number chart. We have shapes, the, they have a ruler, alphabets, a number line, left and right, of course. So we have the extra scaffold there. This is my desk. This is my teacher table and you'll see I have dry erase dots on the table so there's no need for whiteboards. Um, it makes it really easy when I'm working with students in groups to quickly respond on their dots. I love these, I use these every year. I have my little caddy, my rainbow caddy for my items, my pens, pencils, markers, things that I might need. Here is just some extra supplies for me that I might need for my group. These are my math games. Here, I just use this bucket for index cards where I'm adding those words that students might need to be added to our alphabet word wall. And guys, I actually really love these cards that I put on display. I just hung them using clothespins and they are so phenomenal for intervention groups when you're working on sounding out words and decoding sounds. Having them on display is a life changer. I'm not having to constantly flip through the cards to figure out which card I'm on. Just put it on display back here so you can reference it really quickly. Okay, let me just show you what it looks like up close. I just glued the sides down with hot glue and then just use a clothespin for each of the cards here. And this is on display right at the back of my teacher table. So helpful. If you haven't done that, please do it. Now this looks a bit messy, but <laughs> This contains like my Sharpies, glue sticks, sticky notes, just anything that's important that I might need for my class. And I also use these cute little dragons as erasers for my dry erase dots. So as the students are working in groups, so if I write something, we're using these as erasers. So cute, right? So back here, initially these boards are blank and any of my anchor charts that I post, I will use these boards back here for my anchor charts. So for math, these two are for math, these two are for reading, and then for my science and social studies words, I'll put them on display here. So here I have just an example for math. We have the word problem at the top, and then I'm showing them the different strategies that they can use to solve the problem along with a number sentence that they can write. Okay, so that's anchor chart. Anchor chart for reading, focusing on inference, main idea. All right, and then here is our calm down section. If a child is having a really difficult time in my class and they just need to refocus, I'll send them back here to calm down. 
As you can see, we have strategies for how they can calm down, like breathing. Uh, they can read a story. They can grab a fidget. Their fidgets are here in this little seat sack. So we got all sorts of fidgets. Watch the lava. So this is great for just giving students an area that they can go to to get themselves together before returning to class. So they can take deep breaths, use a fidget, draw about their feelings, but before they can do those strategies, they have to identify their feelings. Okay, so that's our calm down section. Here is just an area for extra book bags as well as my girls' book bags. I have extra book bags for students that might need them throughout the year if they run out of supplies. These book bags are available for them. All right, so I think I've gone through everything. This is also my podium. And I love that our principal got us podiums this year and not really desk. The podium is going to be used to have my books on display. And it's just also where I put my work and things that I need for class. And if I have like materials or something that I need as I'm working, I'll just throw them in this podium. Right now it's a little bit messy, but that's what it's usually used for. All right guys, so I think I've gone through everything. I hope that you enjoyed my classroom tour. I hope that it will help as you're developing your classroom. Let me know if you have questions, drop your comments in the comment section. Let me know how your year is going. And until next time, love you guys. Bye.